Hello and welcome to the Quibber Channel. I'm Jason, your host. Now, there's going to be some changes, and it's not, as I say, changes. I don't like changes, but I will no longer be taking part of the Munchies and Manifesto open mic community. Now, this isn't Manny's fault. Manny tried his best to sort this out, but it was a no-win situation. So, Manny and most of the community are fucking amazing. And I thought long and hard, and I'm not going to go into the details of what happened. We need to just draw a line under it. I wish them only the best, and especially I wish Manifesto only the best. It's... It's sad. I spent quite a bit of time at last night outside on my Quingo doing a bit of an introspection. I just don't think I gel with certain people. And I think people take what I do or what I say in completely the wrong way. This has been building for months. It hasn't just been the one-off, it's been building for like the last six months. And it has affected my mental situation. As one of my friends said, this could end up driving you crazy. And I can't allow that into my life. And in those situations, I can't just do a gradual thing. I can't just stop doing the one part of it. I have to cut the entire thing out. People won't understand that, but it's, it's not me running away. It's self-preservation. I tried to stay in touch with the people that were involved. I tried to sort out what was going on. But no, it's done. I will still be doing open mic. I will still be doing in other places. And I still will be exploring VR chat and spending time in karaoke and things like that with my friends. But there's something I do want to speak about. I've always said from my earliest videos, that I have very few red lines in my life. I don't matter, don't, don't care if a stranger says things about me, really. Um, I don't mind if anything like that, but if someone I know and trust either lies to me or accuses me of lying, it, it, it is a red letter day. It is a total screw up day. It, is a, it will trigger me. It will make me go nuclear. It doesn't matter if someone I don't know does this. That, that, that's not. That's just internet bullshit. But if someone I know, someone I care about, someone I've been around for a while, doesn't believe what I say, 
do not cross that line. Yes, you can have misunderstanding and issues. But from the earliest time, I've always told people that I know, in all situations, that I'm not the easiest person to be around sometimes. That I, I have triggers, and I work through my triggers, and I'm slow, I slowly figure them out, and that when I... Cause I can't fix something unless it happens, and then I figure it out. But this goes beyond that. You see, everybody in the world that you talk to and you tell them that you're honest and that you can't lie and that if you lie or deceive or hold something back, it makes you physically ill, that it is a nausea inducing, that is a, a concept that your brain cannot keep inside. When you tell people that, they think, hey, this is wonderful, this is amazing. This is fucking awesome. I've got this person in my life who can't lie to me. But it's all, nine, I would say 99% of people cannot handle it. Because the moment you say something that they didn't want to hear, even if it is the truth, then the gloves come off and I always warn people I warn fucking everybody But all through my life, I've had this problem. See, what a lot of people know, don't know is I was an ad head admin and the head admin coder implementer for an online game from 1998 to 2008. And right at the start, I decided that we were going to have no backroom deals. That if something went wrong, it was going to be public facing. That there was going to be no kind of hidden deals for anybody, no favouritism. In fact, I explained right from the start that favouritism, and people didn't believe me, but how could, if you're my friend, you know me better, and therefore I hold you to a higher standard than a stranger. If one of my close friends lies or cheats or deceives or causes hassle for me, I will hold them to a higher level than someone who walks on the street. This doesn't mean I don't forgive screw-ups. This doesn't mean I have problems with people making mistakes. That's all fine. But well, intentional lies, intentional deception, intentional destruction of things around me and myself. I will hold those people to a higher level and the punishments will be greater than if it was a stranger. Because a stranger doesn't know anything. And so for 10 years, I ran a game where if you screwed up and you were just a, just a player, then what you did would become public and the punishment would be public. A name and shame policy. It worked. Some people really didn't like it. And there started certain things. And this has got mirror to things that happen these days as well. Um, back then, oh my God, there was some massive, massive lies told about me by these people that I had named and shamed. Oh my God, I remember, first of all, they tried to say that Paola didn't have cancer. 
that the only reason I was telling people all this was to get sympathy fucks. That, um, oh, there were so many different lies told about me and Paola. And those lies came from people that we kicked out of the game and named and shamed. In fact, they actually built their own game based on that kind of hatred. And anybody who was kicked out of my game, they would take to their game and that. Now, the rules were very simple for the game. If you found a bug, if you found something that gave you an unfair advantage, you tell the fucking people in charge and we fix it. And this was never a, oh my God, you've done something wrong, get rid of them. No, there were always um, layers to it and trying to actually work things out. Like, it might be an in-game punishment. Like, for example, one character... One person's player did some stuff wrong and I decided we'll punish them in game. We'll set up a stock in the middle of the square and we'll put them in stocks. Their character will we'll take away their character's ability to move and everything and that and this will last for a few days and that's it. So there was always in game punishments to start with them though. Depending depending on the severity of what they had done. If they had harassed someone or done something or even become a sexual predator or anything like that, of course, they were fucking gone straight away. But minor stuff like maybe doing, breaking a few of the rules of duplicating items or things like that, we just tried to deal with it in the God's Wrath type thing in-game. But yeah, even back then, Certain people cannot handle being called out for doing something wrong. Oh my God, they cannot handle being called out. When they've obviously done something wrong, they cannot handle it. And so even back then, yeah, that was the downside to it. But it gave me a bit of peace. I didn't have to have fucking sessions with people in private and then keep that away from the rest of the public and I always felt like I was betraying people if I didn't tell the truth. I've always said that you will always know where you stand with me. On our server I will chat about someone and bitch about a situation and that. And then they'll log on to the server and I'll tell them exactly the same thing. I've just told everybody else. Oh, there's no hidden meat. There's no hidden things. There's no thingy about it. And most people understand that I'm doing this from a view of... I care enough to put the information there, to talk to people thingy. But when people I look up to do something wrong... I will say that I'm disappointed. Because that person should know better. But this doesn't work in certain situations. And I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. But these things happen. This is why I say to people, I am the most loyal friend you will fucking ever have. You'll be able to come and visit my house. You'll be able to be part of my life. You'll be able to thingy. Just don't lie to me. You can keep secrets. I don't mind people having secrets. They don't have to tell me anything they don't want to, unless they want to, but don't intentionally lie to me. And if you do, please tell me. Once you do, get to the stage that you actually trust me with that knowledge, tell me. Don't, don't leave me to find out. It. Always thought that 
Lazy people don't lie because it takes more effort to keep a lie going than it does just to tell the truth. The no fucks given type thing just kind of doesn't... Thingy. I think people, a lot of old people get to that point where they basically just speak their mind. But yeah. It's a big change. I don't run away from situations, but I do have to distance myself when things, bad things happen. And when situations are not going to resolve in a good way. And that's what it came down to with me. So I'm okay. I wish the people at Munchies only the best. And life moves on. On another note, I had a good night's sleep. But when I say a good night's sleep, I mean, people think, would think class different. I managed to get six hours sleep. That is fucking amazing. Not all in one group. It was go to bed at 10, wake up at 11.30, get back, back asleep by midnight, wake up at one fifty. get back asleep, wake up at about uh, just f coming up to five o'clock and then it was like okay i'm awake gotta get up now the trick is when when i have when i have a when i go to sleep when I wake up, either before I won't go to sleep, I've got to make sure I fall asleep before anything comes to my mind. If it comes to my mind, that's it. Not going to sleep. If I wake up and I can't get back to sleep in a certain way and that, if my brain starts thinking about something like, ooh, I should sort out the cabling behind my computer or something like that, or ooh, do I need a shave? Ooh, what about, what about having a shower at 2 a.m. in the morning? Or, oh, I haven't sorted out that desk. That neat desk, I need to move some stuff around. And we'll, if anything like that kicks in, then nope, not going back asleep. So managing to get back asleep like three times or two times, three times during the night and it being mm. five o'clock before I get up is fucking amazing. I'm still organising things T today. Two kitchen chairs. Kitchen chairs come. I haven't had kitchen chairs for years. Was the kitchen was another computer gaming streaming place. And now this is the place of where I will spend most of my time. And so, yes your kitchen tables kitchen we've got a kitchen table that hasn't got anything on we've got and today two kitchen chairs are going to be delivered that i will put together and when my brain isn't distracted and they will go in there and it, it, it's 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 fun it's fun to me because it's like Cool, there's going to be kitchen chairs in the in the kitchen. <laughs> Shouldn't be something that's yay, but it does make me happy. Um 
I'm coming to the end of my series of books on Audible, which is making me sad. In fact, let, let's do a little bit of a rambly, rambly, rambly on that. Yeah. Let's bring up my Audible account and I'll show you. I've started reading the type of books that really seems to gel with my mind. It really does. And let's bring it up and then on. Okay, so right, so I'm going to share this with you. I should share this with you. Window capture this. Filters. No. Why did I choose filters? Come on, Jason, focus. I know, I'm doing this too long. It doesn't matter. Okay, so. Okay, so. Let me just, um, hmm. Seems like a good thing. We'll do that then. Okay, so. Defiance of the Fall. It's what's called a lit, lit RPG, literature RPG um, set of books, where basically, think Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. It doesn't matter what kind of, or um, the Traveller series of things. It doesn't matter what kind of, Role play system you're thinking it could be the same role play system used in things like Baldur's Gate or anything like that. But you base an entire set of books within that world. But you acknowledge, you acknowledge the system that makes up the world. So therefore, people can look at their stat screen. People can see their titles. People can um, view the levels of monsters. And so on and so forth. And I thought, when I first heard about you, I thought, this is going to be, yeah, this can't work. But I am now on book. I am now on book. I think it's the longest series I ever freaking think. I am now on book. And each one of these books is 23 odd hours long. I mean, we're not talking short lessons to the bit. I'm on book 10 at the moment. And unfortunately, there's only three more books to go. Of course, it's still writing, writing it, but I'm burning through this thing. I'm, I'm fucking loving it. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on book, so I'm on book 10 at the moment. So, yeah. And so the basic premise of this book is... Let's take that off. You're a guy. There's something called the system. And the system is a universal... Oh, what can I, can I say? GM. Um, it's very impersonal. It's more computer-like. And it integrates planets, and planet and Earth gets integrated, and you're just just a normal guy to start with, and you sl I bought you. I won't go into the details of it, but Defiance of the Fall is fucking amazing book. The first one, all of them are. In fact, all the books are. And so you are in a situation where, imagine if basically. You started living in Skyrim or something like that, but you had the system screens. You had the scoreboard, your stat screens and everything, and that everything had levels and abilities and that. And there was classes that you could learn and that after a certain amount of time. And you could be, and there was a form of mana called, called, called cosmic energy and so on and all different things. 
that work into this system, all following a set of rules. And um, the very premise of the system is the system is created to evolution via conflict. The system doesn't mind if billions and trillions of people die out because it might evolve one person. It might take that one person. Imagine in your role play game that you play how many trash mobs you destroy, how many beings you destroy in there to level up your character. And of course, if you, if you become one of these top two things, you become something called Heaven's Chosen. And you are actually, it puts situations in your way, in your planet, that will either kill you or make you stronger over time. And it's, it's a refreshing read. I really enjoy it. I mean, I'll be fucking... But the, it isn't the only lit RPG. There's, I've found there's hundreds of different authors that do the lit RPG. So I've already grabbed another couple of series to actually try out and see how they feel. Because they all have different systems. They all follow different role plays. They all follow different unique role plays that might be completely... Some, a few of the old... Some of them would be like the old um, AD and D adventures, but these, but well, even them weren't. They weren't self-aware. They weren't aware of the stat screen and all that kind of thing. A lit RPG is actually has levels. You level up. You gain experience from kills, and so on. And each each type of series in the lit RPG deals with it differently. But for gamers, if if it. it it fits in with us very well as gamers. It's very refreshing. So yeah, I'm... Even though I've got three more books to go, my brain is still going, not fair. <laughs> even though I knew there had to be an end to it. Oh. We're good. I think I'm going to have to do some maintenance work on my Quingo. Started making a squeaking noise when I turn left or right. I know, it, I know it's probably just the outer wheels need greasing in there. Because of the, or the weather and everything. Um, unfortunately, I can't keep the Quingo indoors over winter, so it's going to happen. Um, may just have to save up until after Christmas and get it serviced. Or I'll try to do it myself. I don't know. I don't really know. We will look into it. So. I hope everybody's having a good day. And I want to reiterate at the end here. That I have, I have no ill will towards Manny and that they're just taking a different path from me that I can't follow and I can't be involved with it happens people leave people come back people do other things life goes on I'm sorry I hope you're all having a good day <laughs>